So the trace of an operator is a basis independent uh, characteristic, I guess you could say, of an operator, um, just like eigenvalues are. So, and for good reason, because it's defined in terms of the eigenvalues. So if uh, we're looking at a vector field over a complex, um, over the complex numbers, the trace of an operator T is the um, sum of its eigenvalues uh, where they are summed according to multiplicity. So, in other words, the trace of t looks like, um, we can write it as lambda 1 plus lambda 2 plus all the way up to lambda n. If, if, we, if there, uh, some of these are perhaps repeated, but if it's repeated you know, three times, then it shows up three times in the sum. Um, or as the multiplicity of lambda 1 times lambda 1 plus da 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 up through uh, multiplicity of lambda m times lambda m. And so here, in this uh, second one, lambda 1 through lambda m are all distinct values. And, and so these are just two different ways of, of writing the same thing. The second one has uh, fewer terms because, or may have fewer terms, because we bundle any repeats of the same one together in one term just with, just with the coefficient there. Um, that's how it's defined for an operator over a complex vector field. If you have um, a, a real vector field, then you do the same thing, but you use the um, eigenve uh, eigenvalues of the complexified uh, transform instead. <coughs> okay, and so as, as we've uh, seen or discussed, the matrix of that complexified transform is just going to be the exact same matrix. So if you're thinking of, you know, eigenvalues as coming from a matrix, then they're just the same. Um, <coughs> so let's see. So then just the same, except you're allowed to uh, take complex roots of irreducible quadratics. So if T is an operator on, say, uh, C3, and the matrix of this transform um, is, let's see, 3 minus 1 minus 2, 3 2 minus 3, 1, 2, 0. Uh, then it turns out that the eigenvalues are 1. And then we get an irreducible quadratic, which factors into 2 plus 3i um, and, and its conjugate. So oops, and I just ran out of room here. So let me make that slightly smaller. Uh, to minus three i. Okay, um, <coughs> so the trace of t then is um, one plus two plus three i plus two minus three i, which is uh, five. Um, and so then we have a proposition. 10, 12. Suppose that T is a linear operator on V and it's um, finite dimensional vector space with dimension N. Then the negative of the trace of T is the uh, coefficient of z to the n minus 1 
in the characteristic polynomial. Um, and, and so this comes by basically just looking at how you multiply um, binomials out. So if we look at the uh, characteristic polynomial, um, it factors as z minus lambda 1, z minus lambda 2, and so forth. Um, where I've, uh, each one of those factors is repeated with multiplicity. And so then when you go to multiply this out, how do you find the terms? Well, um, you each term in, in the expansion of this is going to come by picking exactly one thing from each pair of parentheses to multiply it together. So the highest order term will be the thing when I, I choose no lambdas. So I have z, I choose the z from the first one and the z from the second one and the z from all the way through, multiply all those together, and I'll get um, the z term here, right? Um, then there'll be, uh, I can take, uh, I'll look at the terms for uh, where I take a z from every factor except maybe one, I'm sorry, except exactly one. So I'll have a, a minus lambda one, and then z's from all the others. And I'll have a minus lambda two, and then z's from all the others, and so on and so forth. So if I collect all these, I'm going to get minus all those guys. And then each one of those, I had um, one lambda and n minus one z's and so forth, right? So if I kept on doing this, then the um, what, what I would have for the next one is I'd, I'd have like lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 2, lambda 3, lambda 1, lambda 3, and all other um, pairs, possible pairs that I could have of lambdas. Like that, z to the n minus 2, and so on and so forth. And then, um, so each time I'm, what I'm doing is I'm just, uh, I'm making a choice. So it's a combinatorial thing called a uh, binomial coefficient or n choose two, if you know of it that way. Um, that's gonna be how many different things there are to pick at each time. And so by the time I get to the very end, then everything that I'm gonna be picking is just going to be, I take the lambda term from each one. And so I'll have minus one to the n uh, times the product of all the lambdas. All right, so that's that's what it looks like when I multiply everything out. And, and we don't need any of that data um, except for this first part right here. I just thought it might help to show where the rest of this uh, comes from. So in any case, we have z minus trace t z to the n minus 1 plus stuff. And then this last one here also has a, an interpretation. We'll see shortly that that's the determinant, the product of all the eigenvalues. OK, and that does it. So just highlight this guy.